My mosaic piece consists of small mirror squares, red squares and a variety of pink, purple, some yellow and orange. The mirror one is when I look into it, I see myself. I enjoy experimenting with painting, with oils, with pastel. Charcoal's a bit dirty, but it's still nice, and that's what I started with charcoal from the fire when I was a young kid, drawing on the footpath and on the rock. My history on my mother's side, the Aboriginal side, and I like it because it gives me peace. It brings out an inner me that I haven't even seen yet. Well, I find things that are coming out that I'm drawing, they're just coming to the mind, and then I'm putting it on paper, and then I look at it and I think, I could do this with that and I could do that, add this to it. And, and so it's really bringing out something you didn't know you had in you. And if you look for a book, you wouldn't find it because it's you, it's yours, you know? And yeah, and it's a good feeling because when you see the results, you would never have dreamt in your mind or even thought to look for it, that you could bring such a beautiful thing or a different beautiful thing out of that inner part of you. And to me, some of the things that comes out is really sacred. It's taken me back to an afterlife that I don't think I've been in. But it, it brings that out and I think, have I been here before and seen that? Or have I been here before and seen rock painting like that? So a lot of my work is spiritually um, filled by listening to elders, what I can, what I can't do, and what comes into my own being, into my head, and to my soul. And when I do my paintings, most of my soul goes into it, so it lives. You know, it's a living thing. It's not just slap, slap, slap. It's a living thing. Yeah. Painting is a living thing, isn't it? Red squares surrounding me, these are what I consider to be my hiccups in life, like the hiccups of being diagnosed with MS, hiccup of having breast cancer. The first step towards my resurrection was being able to walk again, and that happened at Crawford Hospital there, and the physiotherapists were just incredible in there, how they gave me the exercises to do every second day. And it took me two years to master all the things. I eventually had a walking stick, and um, they trained me how to use that. And then balancing as well to catch balls and throw them back, things like that. And impossible to begin with because I couldn't balance and pick it up and throw it back. It was good because I got to walk out of the hospital, um, walk out with a walker. It was amazing for me anyway. I just found it so exciting. I look back and I get all teared up a bit because of they helped you and, and yeah it was them. It was the ones in there that actually did the hard work to make me walk again. Oh, well, I always loved painting and drawing as a kid. And uh, at school, I was encouraged to study art, but she said, I know you've got your own interests with singing. The highest I got was a Melbourne chorale, singing in the choir, <laughs> with a symphony with the orchestra. And that was exciting to sing in the chorus. And my voice developed really quickly. And I could sing with a quite pronounced and loud operatic voice, but I never liked the sound. I was all the arias I was given to sing. But I look back now and I, I love the music. The art has given me another form of expression, you know, apart from the music. So, and um, they really encourage us to um, express ourselves with art and they give us a technique that take it to a higher level with the old pastel. I find that a lot easier because I use my fingers instead of a brush. I suppose there's a, a, sense, of, a sense of liberation with the artwork and because of our artwork you feel a freedom when you get to express yourself in the right way. That's what the art group has become to mean, the freedom that you can achieve through the correct expression of art that you aim to um, eventuate and achieve. All of the other ones on the outside, the paler colours, the pale purple, pink, orange, the yellow and the white that surrounds it. Has, it means that that is a surrounding halo of things that are good. It said in the newsletter, artists wanted. And I thought, I wonder if I'm one of them. <laughs> uh, that led to everything else. <laughs> After I realised I was getting better, that I was not only getting better, but some 
I was getting quite good. <laughs> and I even, at some stage, I started calling myself an artist. That's how natural it was. <laughs> and uh, somehow or other, I'm not quite sure how, I ended up in a nursing home. And after my initial shock, which everyone gets, I discovered my creative life was flourishing. <laughs> and they started art classes not long after I was there with other, other like-minded people. Lines are something I came to, I think about two or three years ago. And uh, they're fabulous. They can do anything. <laughs> and with Arter at your side, He's, he, he encourages the lines in ways that I can't imagine, but I'm trying. I'm getting there. I'm going to. <laughs> well, I started off doing black and white lines, and then I have, I have taken a left-hand turn, and I'm doing little people called um, chaps. <laughs> yes, and chaps are neither male nor female. They could even be alien species and they can be coloured or black and white. But they're terribly, terribly cute and friendly. <laughs> the white has become the glue that has stuck things together. The pieces I've picked up and now they're being put together. I used to think that uh, MS was just for young people with young disease and um, at my age um, I, I wouldn't get it. I, I didn't know much about MS and confusion and amazement. Um, I, because I hadn't really, really come across anybody else with MS so I didn't know um, what to expect, what I was going to experience or um, by joining the MS Society I go to a, water aerobics now and that enables me to meet other people with MAS and to socialise with them. You find that you're not the only person suffering. Um, there's other people in similar circumstances to you and you learn how to cope and what to expect and learn how to cope with life. I know now I'm not experiencing anything that other people in the group haven't experienced. I hadn't been anywhere near an art, doing art sort of things till um, since I left school. That was in the 60s, so um, yeah, it's, it was a long, it was a long break. Yeah, I'm amazed how, um, yeah, what we're doing. It's really good. Um, I did a picture of a, a, a fox, now I'm doing the picture of a koala, and uh, I like to do um, landscapes and animals. The artwork teaches you, um, not to achieve, you can't achieve everything all at once. You can't just sort of slap on something and say, here it is. You've got to be patient. You've got to look at the bigger picture and see how it, it's going to work out and not to get annoyed with yourself if you make a mistake, because everybody makes mistakes. Accept the fact and... Um, Ask for assistance if you need it, and to make it far and and get on, get on with it, and that's the same with life. You've got to get on with it. The yellow in in the in my design is the the sun up above, and also the brightness in the centre of most of the flowers that I've got. I had very bad depression and diagnosed as major depression unresponsive to medication so I had to go into the Melbourne clinic I hated it it was awful I felt like I was in sort of a jail and then um, they said they would go ahead with the ECT treatment but then it does make you lose your memory so I was terrified of that because be previous to being diagnosed I had finished my singing training and had become a singing teacher and was heading to the opera companies to sing. I mean, I was well and truly on that path. So that knocked all that, that down. And in the end, I ended up having like 17 ECT treatments 
the result of that was the fact that I lost my words. I was devastated. I couldn't remember any songs. I couldn't remember a melody. I couldn't remember any lyrics. And for me, that's my essence of my life is singing. I, if I don't sing, I'm not, I'm not whole. And I hadn't sung, tried to sing for like 10 years. I heard this melody playing and it was actually the Barcarolle. And it was just this. I thought, I know that, I know it. And I kept singing that bit over and over. And then the rest of it started to come back. And then the words came back. And I couldn't believe that was just the best thing. And like hearing it and just getting more words. And then these all came flooding back. All this music just came back to me. and. I could sing it all and my voice was still there and I was so excited about it. Pale Pink is, well, Pink has become into my life in relation to the, the cancer. The pink is bright, it's come away from the darkness of the red and now it, it's up there in the sky. When I was younger, my mother told them to give me a violin to learn. So I played in little orchestras. Yes, I really liked it, and it gave me a bit of, um, gave me a lot of um, appreciation, music appreciation. I really liked it. And I continued it, even though through my fragmented life, I still was able to st uh, stay with the violin. And um, the, the music actually gave me a lot of solace. Well, I didn't come because it was an art group. I came because of the social activity um, and the, the confusion that one feels when, they, when, they, when they're confronted with some sort of a illness like this. And um, so I came for that support. Little by little, he convinced me to give it a go, which I did, and he helped me to uh, construct a, a painting. And so, yeah. And then when, when actually one sold, I was flabbergasted and thrilled, you know. F f fulfillment in, in a lot of different places. First of all, um, when, when I got diagnosed with the MS, I didn't know what was going on and I didn't know what I was gonna do. And then when I settled down and I talked to different people and I was able to get my feet back on the ground, I had a, I had a, I had a goal, right? And I was able to, to go there. I believe each person is given um, is given what they can handle, and um, I believe I was also given what I was having. That's it. I believe every everything it's meant to it meant to be, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So I'm happy. I'm happy with my my uh, situation, my position. I'm not happy got MS, but I'm, I'm happy with my what I'm what I what I have. The orange to me is a very strong colour because I like terracotta, which is also orange, comes from the earth, and so there is strength in myself, and that is providing strength after the red squares. It begins at school. When I got diagnosed actually at 25, and they found my first lesion on my MRI, uh, they said to me, do you remember the strangest thing that's happened to you? And it was when I was 14. I remember turning to a friend of mine in class and said to her, my toes feel like they've been chopped off. That's the only way I could describe it. Luckily, it went dormant for, for years, and um, so it gave me a chance to travel. I wouldn't have travelled before otherwise. And, uh, and, and the interesting thing is if you knew then what you know now, would you do the same thing? And you probably would just have this hanging over your head all the time. After not working for a while, I, I decided to join our wonderful Confident Living program. And um, yeah, and it gave me a chance to get back into art. And you look at life differently, you see it in a different way. And, and you learn about yourself. And you learn your limitations and how you can overcome them and barriers that you might have had up before, then that's when you, you push yourself. I do a lot of my art in, with my left hand now, 
um, because my right hand's too weak. I can't, I can't hold the brushes up and things like that. So my left hand's taken over. So the other side of my brain is, is switched on. I say challenging, but I've always been adventurous. So, you know, I just I've welcomed it. You know, it's been hard at times. I think that is worth it to me. If I know I can achieve it, that's my battle and it's my challenge. And, you know, if I can get through it, you know, that's enough for me. Positivity. I want to remain positive. And if I can try and achieve, you know, every challenge I come across, if I can get over it, that's all I can ask of myself. The pale purple is showing the, the small colouring of the small African violets that I grow. My story begins when I first realised something was wrong. Hopping out of the shower, having long hair, and you, put, you wrap your towel around your hair, and I noticed I felt tingles, I felt pins and needles in my neck. Next time I washed my hair, the same thing happened again and again and again, so I knew something was wrong. Then I started to get pins and needles in my legs and also numbness. And when I went to see my first neurologist, had an MRI pointed out to me, yes, I do have MS, and cried all the way home to where I parked my car and didn't tell any of my family or friends about my news till I deteriorated and I had to start using a walking stick. I'm, a, I'm lucky. I'm one of the lucky ones. When I told my daughter, she was devastated. And um, when I talk, told my mum and other family members, of course, they were devastated. And, uh, but I just took it in my stride and I thought, I'm happy with my life. I'm trying to make the most of it because make the most today because you don't know what tomorrow is going to be. Full stop, every day is a beautiful day. Well, I came across African violets many years ago and I found that they were very delicate, you could actually propagate them. So I ended up with lots and lots of African violets of many colours, going from um, your pale purple, pale pink into the deeper pinks as well, but you're never quite sure as to what colour the flower was going to be until it came out and put it, poked its head through the, the green leaves that are there. and. That is, it, again, they're a very gentle looking plant and they are very gentle and tender to look after. Liberation of mind 